We've heard from uh, our previous uh, talkers that uh, uh, significant uh, degenerative changes can occur in the uh, more distal aorta uh, following proximal entry tear closure. And uh, with this uh, in mind, the stable concept was evolved about uh, a decade ago by our group, a stage total aortic and branch vessel endoluminal repair to uh, deal with this issue of ongoing degeneration. So basically, stable uh, is constituted by uh, proximal entry tear closure with an endograft, the subsequent remodeling of the more distal collapsed true lumen with bare metal stents, and the use of ancillary techniques to engineer the false lumen and enhance thrombosis to provide a more uh, complete uh, and total aortic repair. So stable engineers the false lumen and the ancillary techniques that we use in this uh, approach uh, can be grouped into three areas, re-entry tear closure, false lumen embolization or occlusion, and bare stent intimal re-expansion. A lot of the re-entry tears are related to branch vessels as we see here with the left renal artery. Re-entry tears can be closed with covered stents which are placed between the aortic true lumen which is stented and uh, connecting that to the uh, branch vessel true lumen, we can obliterate the re-entry, much as in uh, a fenestrated endoluminal case. The success rate with this sort of technique is in the order of 95%. So it's quite a robust technique, and the principle can be applied to virtually any branch vessel re-entry tear, such as this common iliac re-entry, or this right common iliac bifurcation re-entry, which is treated with a bifurcation device. Moving on to false lumen embolization and occlusion, we use this technique largely when uh, a patient has persistent uh, false lumen flow uh, and the presence of underlying degenerative change or high risk for degenerative change. This we feel can be applied in about 20 to 30 percent of cases and uh, we can uh, see the concept illustrated here. This is the after procedure or augmented false lumen thrombosis by embolotherapy. Uh, we see uh, re-entry uh, fenestration supplying flow to the false lumen distally. And using those residual re-entry fenestrations, we can approach those from the true lumen with a catheter, fill the false lumen with uh, a coil nest which stimulates further thrombosis and occlusion of re-entry flow and further propagates thrombus to allow false lumen thrombosis and remodeling with com compaction of the coils within the aortic wall. Same sort of approach can be used with uh, other devices such as false lumen occlusive blockers, which we can place in the false lumen. And again, as thrombosis propagates, false lumen remodeling occurs, and as, the, as it does so, the device uh, remodels itself to produce this sort of robust finish on a seven-year follow-up. So we have ways of uh, dealing with uh, false lumen uh, uh, flow using embolization, and the outcomes using this technique with 66 or 63-month follow-up are quite encouraging with high technical success rates, very low morbidity, and the ability to achieve positive aortic remodeling in the majority of the patients. Just moving on to a, a slightly different approach to uh, the persistent uh, false lumen uh, flow distally is the stabilize approach, which is an extension of stable. This is uh, stent and balloon induced interval disruption and relamination, and here we uh, deal with uh, the persistent false lumen by basically obliterating it by dilating the distal endograft and the uh, distally stented segment to completely reoppose the intima against the outer aortic wall. So this is suitable for patients that have got a uh, uh, satisfactory landing zone for the endograft uh, and no evidence of aneurysm or rupture in the stented segment. We think it can be applied in about 50% of cases. Here we've got retrograde flow from distal re-entries, endograft placement and stenting is performed, coda remodeling balloon now dilates the distal stents, completely reopposing the intima against the outer aortic wall. We've got safety catheters to allow alignment of the branch vessels to the aortic interval fenestrations, and following the procedure we have a complete obliteration of the false lumen. We can also see the complete obliteration on the one month and uh, three year CT follow-up, and so this technique allows re-establishment of uniluminal flow dynamics allows us to rapidly remodel the aorta before uh, subsequent dilatation uh, that occurs in the more uh, chronic phase. And finally, look at the outcomes of this technique. We uh, have uh, encouraging outcomes with uh, very low uh, procedural uh, complication rates, very low early morbidities and mortalities, and uh, with uh, a relatively good aortic-specific uh, survival as uh, follow-up to 66 months. 
Importantly, there is uh, no evidence of adverse aortic remodeling and longer term follow-up. So what do we do when we've got a residual false loom of perfusion and degeneration? We can uh, achieve total aortic uh, dissection repair using a family of robust techniques which allow control over remodeling and offer us potentially new directions to explore as we evolve dissection uh, therapies to the next level. Thank you very much.